Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. Mastering any discipline, like learning a second language or playing piano or painting, requires you develop skills. And you want to develop those skills fast enough to feel your own progress, to feel encouraged by it. To master anything, you need three things. You need knowledge, specific practice, and feedback. So let's look at five fundamental principles that will help you master anything. Principle number one, to start with, you need someone who can clear the decks of confusion and set before you the most foundational ideas and concepts in a series of logically sequential steps. In other words, the knowledge needs to be clear and to make sense to you. And central to this, the focus needs to be on learning principles and not on techniques. It's a little like that adage when you teach a person to fish, you feed them for life. So let's take an example from painting. Supposing one of the pieces of advice you'd heard is you should always start with a thumbnail sketch before beginning to paint. And so you do a thumbnail. So here are two student thumbnails. And I'm not showing you these because they're good or bad, but to show you that the student has done them with no real understanding of what they're trying to do. In these examples, the students may have drawn something, but not in a way that makes it easier to paint. It's hard to do something meaningful if you don't know the meaning of the something you are doing. Now look at these thumbnails. They have only one function, to figure out the placement of the main masses or shapes on the picture plane and how those main masses guide the viewer to a center of interest. That is the function the meaning of the thumbnail. And with that meaning, you have something meaningful to try and do. But you need to understand the principle behind creating thumbnails, why we do it and what they're for, in order to actually improve your painting by making thumbnails. That's one of the reasons that my Master in Composition course focuses on drawing. It's the easiest way to learn the principles of sound composition, just using pencil and paper. So that's what we do on the course. Principle two is about how to practice. You've probably heard of that 10,000 hour rule. It was popularized by Malcolm Gladwell in a book called Outliers. Gladwell drew on the research of Dr. Anders Ericsson, who had studied violin students in Berlin. But in fact, Dr. Ericsson said Gladwell had misrepresented the research. 10,000 hours just happened to be the average number of hours these students had practiced violin by the age of 18. And 10,000 is a great number for a writer that wants to make catchy arguments. It's not the number of hours that matters. There's two considerations here about that 10,000 hours. One, these were gifted violin students wanting careers in the insanely competitive world of concert violin. You, on the other hand, are probably trying to get good, maybe even really good. You want, I imagine, to build the skills to be happy and engaged by your progress and expression. That doesn't take 10,000 hours. And once you get to a certain level, then you're pulled naturally by your enjoyment of the process itself and your progress. It becomes self-perpetuating. And the second point, it isn't the number of hours, but the kind of practice you need to spend your practice hours using deliberate practice. That was Dr. Erickson's point. Not any old practice. So as an example, if you were learning to play a seven minute piece on the piano by Chopin, and you could play most of it pretty well, but there was a confoundingly difficult piece 15 seconds long in the middle, deliberate practice would focus on that. Most of the skill improvement comes from the effort to master this difficult section. In painting, to really improve the quality of your work, you need to do exercises that hone in on, on the particular skills where you're weakest. And in my experience, in most students, that is compositional structure. And that brings us to the third principle. Your practice should be pretty challenging. Everyone in educational research today says the best way to learn is to struggle to challenge yourself, not to overwhelm yourself, but out about 10% beyond your comfort zone. And that struggle embeds the skill and knowledge, makes them permanent. They become permanent because the struggle actually creates new neural pathways in the brain. 
and deliberate practice reinforces those pathways, which gets us to principle four, the dance of avoidance. That's the barrier or resistance that you feel to getting started each day. Nothing kills creativity quicker than letting your resistance block you from starting. And it's real, I still deal with it. But to make real progress in your art, we have to learn to overcome our own dance of avoidance. We have to learn to navigate our fear of creative expression. And what do we fear? Well, who really knows? Ridicule maybe or shame about something we tried when we were made fun of when we were young. Learning to overcome the resistance to starting is much, much more important than talent. We express our fear in lots of ways, but perfectionism often tops the list. Oh, I can't show this painting yet. It's not any good. I'm not any good. If we want to have an artistic practice, we need to learn to let the painting go, to show it. Look at this diagram charting the quantity of work done by a composer against their fame. The vertical is fame, how great they were, and along the bottom, how much work they produced over their lifetime. You see that Mozart, Bach, and Beethoven produced a lot of work. We only listen to a tiny fraction of it now. The best rises to the top like cream, but we need all that milk, the volume of the work, for the cream to rise in. We need to learn to make the work, to do it, realize a lot of it won't be that good, but we need to do it in order to have an artistic practice. It matters less how good each individual piece is and much more that you do it. And the fifth principle is self-evaluation. Mastering a skill means being able to evaluate your own work, knowing when you're on the right path and when you're not. And how do we get that skill? Giving and getting feedback. And you get that feedback in two ways in Mastering Composition. One, each week I do a live online call critiquing work from the past week. Everyone, of course, thinks that what they were struggling with the last week was unique to them. But in truth, there are usually only three or four main issues that might be causing problems each week. And the calls are recorded if you can't make it. Second, you learn to critique other people's work, seeing what works, what doesn't, and why. And then you naturally start to apply that understanding to your own work. This is how my Mastering Composition course produces such big gains for students and quickly. Students in the course show their drawings weekly, which addresses the dance of avoidance head on. Oh my God, I don't want to show my drawings each week. But as I said, nothing kills creativity faster than the fear of criticism. And as long as that stops you, it is hard to progress. But as much as building skills, the sooner you get your work out there consistently and not treating each piece as precious or each piece defining who you are as an artist, the better. We have a unique critiquing system, a clear, specific, objective set of criteria to analyze someone's drawing each week. And then you go back and critique your own drawing with that same filter and you start to see your work more objectively, both the strengths and the weaknesses. This idea may seem scary at first, but as Jane Seavers of Silver City, New Mexico said, I love the interactive aspect of the course. Without that interactive part, I wouldn't have been so motivated. It was so gratifying to get feedback from the other students. With the exercises and the rigor of participating, I feel I made enormous progress in the month. This feedback practice builds artistic resilience. Getting over the fear of vulnerability and failure lets you feel the excitement to try something new, to explore and to feel the enthusiasm of your own creativity in action. In most of those online university courses, the completion rate is around 7%. I've taught this course now to over 1,600 people, and we have a completion rate of 90%. That is, 90% of the students posted images for each of the six weeks of the course, and everyone knows you get better with practice. Practice is number one. Nothing 
replaces it. The Mastering Composition Drawing course gives you specific exercises of deliberate practice each week. Each week builds on the last, so you're learning and integrating foundational skills in bite-sized chunks. During the course, you'll experience these five principles of mastery, and you'll get to see how they coalesce into an efficient and effective way to dramatically improve your painting. If you want to make big strides towards mastering composition and transforming your painting, I invite you to join me for the course. Below this video, you'll see a gray box that says, for more information, click here, click on that link and go to the course information page. That page has all the details about the program, what it's like, how it works, and how to sign up. In two days, I'll have another short video on the number one skill needed to master both loose brushwork and for more vibrant color. So go ahead and click below to learn more about mastering composition. I'd be delighted if you join me for the course and you'll learn to build consistently better paintings. All the very best and bye for now.